Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Entity Maze, and welcome to my Pokemon Cinnamon Review Series. Today, I'll be reviewing episode 126, Pikachu's Excited Expedition. Which, although it's kind of bold to put exciting within the title, I personally did find this episode to be quite exciting. Though, if you're not a fan of Pikachu shorts or just generic filler episodes in general, then this episode isn't for you, as it's exactly like them. However, if anybody watching still wants to know more about this episode, and even my thoughts surrounding it, then get relaxed, as I will now jump right into this review. Let's go! So the episode begins off where the previous episode ended, with Ash's Pokemon all filthy greeting our boy Ash after he returned from the past. Which for narrator, then questions what happened to Ash's Pokemon while he was in the past. Then, causing a neat team rewind effect to play, which brings us all the way back to the beginning of the previous episode, where Ash gets transported to the past. Which is also, the true beginning of this episode. This new story beginning with... HUH?! Pikachu are the others talking?! Hello?! Is this movie 20 or over again?! Actually, that's an exaggeration. The Pokemon still have their cries such as Pika, however, the narrator was actually translating what they were saying at the same time. At first though, I did think the Pokemon were talking, which is why it came as such a shock to me, hence my reaction I just provided you lot. But still, this is slightly different. I mean, I knew we were getting an episode revolving around just Ash's Pokemon, as obviously I make discussions on new summary titles and summaries. However, I expected the narrator to be talking about plot points only, like for Pikachu shorts, not translating for Pokemon's full speech, or just have the episode show subtitles of the Pokemon talking, much like the episode titled The Island of the Giant Pokemon. Which was a fantastic episode by the way, one of my favourite original series episodes. Or, finally, this episode could have had no narrator, nor subtitles, just Pokemon Cries. Yet, as I said earlier, we went a whole new route for this one episode, the narrator actually translating what the Pokemon are fully saying. Like, wow. I mean, to be honest, unlike a majority of people who watch this episode, I actually didn't mind the translation, it was even funny at some point, but I will agree with some of those people that the episode could have felt a little bit more engaging if it had any of the other elements I just went over. Though, at the same time, I don't think that will be changing where I'll be placing this episode on the leaderboards, as, again, I didn't mind this narration, and changing it would only be a slight difference in my own personal eyes. So, yeah. Anyhow though, let's now move forward with this episode's story, shall we? So, once Ash disappears, the narrator states that his Pokemon stop questioning where he went off to, deciding to search the forest for him, which they then come across his hat moving around in some tall grass, which they believe is him. But it turns out it was just a pseudo Wudu who ended up with his hat once it drifted away from the Celebi transportation. And I guess this is good as any other time to express that I really adore witnessing wild Pokemon like this one, and even Ash's Pokemon have personality shine through speech. Which of course, is all thanks to the narrator translating what they were saying. He even put on different kind of tones for each Pokemon, which I can appreciate. Violet's voice was definitely my personal favourite. Though, some others were kind of weird to hear, such as Pikachu. I would have expected it to have more of a cute narration, instead of a manly narration. But, it's whatever at the end of the day. Moving along though, the Pokemon decide to search for Ash at the Pokemon School. Yet, they had no luck. But this is where Pikachu then gets the idea to ask Clefable in the Ultra Guardian space to borrow God Charm so they can search for Ash at a high height. But before we get to right God Charm, they even learn that the mountains are multiplying once again. There being 60 in total now, as opposed to the original 20. What on earth is going on? Even Clefable doesn't know where these mountains are coming from. Are there more boxes of mountain alpha or something? Whatever the answer is though, it looks like we're gonna get that answer after the league, due to the next episodes after this upcoming Lily episode being dedicated to the league. It for sure then leading into some kind of arc, or something like that, which then may give us the debut of Mel Metal, which will be cool. Point those mountains aside though, once our Pokemon right Garchomp, 
Though Chomp, with a very fitting personality, don't complain if I go too fast. Takes all Pokemon to Mount Line Killer due to that being the highest location in Alola, which is perfect for trying to spot something or somebody. Got Chomp, then flying home due to its skin not liking the snow. Though, there's no way I cannot mention how this shot really reminds me of the final shot in the Gotta Catch Em All intro. It was neat to see. Atop this mountain, Pikachu was determined to try and look for Ash by looking at every corner of Alola. Yet Lycanroc and Melton on the other hand, started playing adorably in the snow. Oh my god, I can't. That is cuteness overload. Like, oh my god, why does Sun and Moon make all these Pokemon look so darn cute? Soon, all Pokemon decided to snowboard down the mountain to try and find Ash. Which was very reminiscent of the snowboarding scene from Pikachu's Winter Vacation. Which coincidentally, both of those scenes were animated by the amazing Misaki I1. Excellent work my dude, both were very fun to watch. In fact, it was at this moment in time that I realised I was smiling throughout this entire episode so far. And that is simply because it's such a wholesome, fun episode. Much like all of those Pikachu shorts back in the day. Ah, we'll speak more about my overall thoughts later, as we still have more fun scenes to come, such as the Pokemon accidentally landing in the sea after the snowboarding, and accidentally getting eaten by a Waylord, which then spews them out, making a nice blast off reference, leaving our Pokemon crash landing on the beach, but Pikachu actually then engages in a pretty epic duel against a crab roller who stole Ash's hat. And I'm not lying, it was actually surprisingly cool to see this scene because of the beautiful effects being used. But eventually, this duel that seemed like it was going nowhere was finished off by Melton who flashed Cannon Crab Brawler in the face, which was an amusing ending, and again shows that Melton does surprisingly pack a good punch. After this, our Pokemon start to get hungry after all this searching, and after Lycanroc sniffed out some berries, for some reason, despite there being enough berries, the Pokemon all fought in a tree climbing race to see who gets the berries first, which just left every Pokemon falling on top of each other, which inevitably causes Pikachu to thunderbolt everyone, and even a new twist of Melton Fen Flash Cannon all the Pokemon as well, which left all the Pokemon getting fairly dirty. Which I guess all of this was quite funny to watch. I got one chuckle out of it. However, we're now in the end game, as the episode then ends off with all the Pokemon witnessing a bright light, deciding to run towards it, which turns out to be Ash and Turricat returning to the present, which the Pokemon then hug Ash in a hot woman fashion after being worried sick about him. Like, ah, this scene was even cuter the second time around. We even then get the shot of all of Ash's alone and team walking back to Kukui's house, which I really admired. I just love shots of Ash and his Pokemon teams. Alright, with that story now said, let's now move on to my overall summary for this episode. To be honest, all I can really say is exactly some of my thoughts I've already expressed through the scenes of this episode's story. AKA, this episode was a bundle of fun, humorous, extremely wholesome, and very cute, giving myself major Pikachu short vibes as well, which is to be expected, as, you know, we are pretty much the same exact concept, with a few differences, such as the narrator translating for Pokemon, which again, I honestly didn't mind that. In fact, I can only seem to think of one negative regarding this episode, which doesn't really relate to the episode's story, but rather, where this episode is placed in the series, aka two episodes before the League. Which sure, we've gone through episodes before the League multiple times, however, you would assume with introducing two new characters in Season 3, that they would have one or three more episodes before the League, instead of having their second episode be within the League. Which, having an episode like this, would have been a perfect spot for them to have a second episode and even gain development. Yet, here we are, with the writers deciding to showcase this episode instead. It's an intriguing decision. Sure, Sun Moon is meant to be more of a laid-back series, but still, I am disappointed how the writers have been handling these certain things recently. And, again, it's all mainly because Sun and Moon was so focused on telling the game stories within Season 2 that they couldn't introduce these characters earlier or even give the Z-Ring development towards the classmates early on. 
But regardless of this disappointment, it obviously doesn't affect the overall episode. That would be unfair. The point still stands that this episode was glowing with fun. Just, it could have been better to place it early on into the series instead of now. I would honestly recommend you watch this episode if you want some feel good content. However, much like I said in the intro of this video, if you don't like Pikachu shorts or even episodes dedicated to Pokemon getting lost and searching for their trainer, this episode isn't for you. So don't watch it. For my season 3 leaderboard, I'll be placing this episode as number 23 out of 36 episodes. And as you can see, it's among the other fun episodes, while the outstanding character development episodes are above. While for the overall leaderboard, this leaves this episode at number 65 out of 126 episodes. Though, that placement might change in the future. I'm a bit iffy about that placement. As always though, you can find the link to the full leaderboards in the description below. And if you have seen this episode, then do let me know in the comments down below what you personally thought of it though. i love to hear, as we can have different opinions. And that's always okay. Before I sign off this video though, I do want to thank you guys for showing me the true meaning behind Trevor and giving Ash the Sea Crystal within the previous episode I reviewed. I had completely forgotten that the Pokemon were watching Ash use Inferno Overdrive the first time around. This is why I like my community, we always help one another out. Thank you. Now that you've heard that though, I can now sign off this video. So as always, if you did enjoy this video, then please be sure to consider leaving a like, a share, and if you're new here, a subscribe along with it in that bell icon to stay in loop with all things Pokemon anime related. If you want to support this channel any further away, I also have a Patreon. Thank you for watching everybody, this is Entity Maze, signing out.